Vincent Blaisher's exhibition at the Alpine Club in London on Charlotte Road. My name is Janet Johnson. I'm an associate member of the club as an artist and I've curated the exhibition. And today what I'm going to do is highlight three watercolors and explain why I chose them, how they were made, and a little bit more background detail on them. And hopefully this will encourage you to actually come and visit the exhibition. Uh, the first work I'd like to discuss is by John Aldo, who is a Canadian-British uh, traveler and artist, and he summited Mont Blanc in 1827. And this painting from 1828 is from his party going across a crevasse, and, and there's a giant ice boulder in the middle. And in the foreground, you see all this detailing and very three-dimensional painting and watercolor of the ice. And my thought is that this is from memory because of where the viewpoint is. And also, I would think he's one of the party going across the crevasse. So he didn't sit here and paint. So this is partly from memory and then partly from notes. But what's, I think, very appealing is um, the amazing shape of this ice lump. I've never seen one, and I guess he hadn't either. This is the second painting I'd like to talk about, and this is called La Mer de Glace uh, from 1840 by Jean Dubois. And this is a very famous view. A lot of people have painted this view, and this is actually What's interesting about this painting is it was done about 20 years after the first mule track was put in in 1820 for people to actually access the glacier. And so uh, the artist would have walked up or been taken up by mule as the other um, visitors were. And in the foreground, it, there's a table, rock table, and what's on it, I believe, is a client and a guide because the guide has an axe on his waist and that's assuming he's going to be looking after the this gentleman who's wearing striped trousers and spats and they're on a table of rock and here is rhododendrons uh, which flower in summer spring summer so my assumption is a lot of these paintings were done in summer because that would be the summer season july august climbing and this is an amazing painting because of the incredible detail it's quite small tiny little rocks you can see figures down on the ice, women in long dresses and hats, men with alpenstocks, quite long axes like here, you just can see. And then up here is the first building that was started in 1840. The train that everyone goes on now, it was actually not built until 1909. So there was a lot of time that people actually accessed this area by mule. And um, now, as everyone knows, this is quite far melted down. But here you can see the moraine or rocks that are coming from way up the mountain. And it's really worth coming in and inspecting this painting if you come to visit, because the detail is so amazing. of 15 exciting panoramas the Alpine Club has in its collection. It's an amazing record of the glaciers from the 19th century. They date from 1829 to 1859. And the one I've chosen to show you is in the cabinet here at the club on the glaciers exhibition. And this one is called Gornergrat. And I was been here recently. I went up and obviously the glaciers have changed enormously. In this section, this has basically disappeared, all the Gorner Glacier. I was painting from here, 
which is the Gandhi cut, and the glacier is now dropped to here. But the beauty of these panoramas is that uh, they are copies from others by uh, Samuel Gottlieb Studer. And the amazing quality of the paint is that there's we can still see pencil line and black ink, and also the way the glacier's been made very three-dimensional. And the detail is incredible. Each summit, like Liscom, the Brighthorn, even to the Matterhorn, they're all listed. And you can move your way through this area if you know Zermatt and the 4,000 meter peaks. They're all recorded. And it's quite interesting that um, we know the glaciers have dropped, but it's like, how big were they? They were quite big. And as you can see, it's very three-dimensional. Well, hopefully you've been inspired to come to visit the exhibition in person. There's many more paintings to look at, and if you need more information on how to visit, just go to the link on the description of the video.